church. Welcome to church. Why don't you stand with us? Why don't you stretch out a little bit? If you're at home, come on, stand up. We're going to worship Jesus, the one true God, this morning. We're going to have some fun. We're going to move around. We're going to sing. We're going to dance. At least we're going to have a little bubble. Okay, come on. We got something exciting to celebrate today, don't we? I wanna scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness never stops. Your mercy follows me.
strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is faithful today. He is. He's more faithful than you are clapping. I'm telling you that. He's so faithful. Thank He's you, so God. faithful. And whether you're new to church or this is your church, we are passionate about believing that God is who he says he is. That God loves us. He made us. He rescued us. Right. And he's actively invested in our story. He is faithful. Yeah. He's so faithful. We're a church that believes in prayer. And I don't know your experience with prayer, but the Bible says that it says, don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. everything. How many know that's easier everything, everything. said than done? I don't know about you, but I got some worries uh, I deal with. And, and sometimes I find myself worrying more than I'm praying. I worry about, you know, that deadline or that bill or, you know, restoring that relationship or that, that thing I have to get done, that project. And the Bible says, worry, don't worry about anything. But pray about everything. We're a praying church. And we take prayer requests. And we want to welcome our online campus. Really, people from this city, province, all over the world and in person. We take prayer requests all week. And you'll see behind me a number you can text your prayer request to. You text the word prayer to that number. And then send your requests in. Because we believe as a church we're a praying church. My gosh, babe. Like, when Mike and I communicate, we have this earthly connection, right? We chat. We sometimes talk about our bills, our life direction, and communicate that. Yeah. But it takes a shift when we cast it to God yeah. in prayer and communicate with him. So today, this church community is so much more than just COVID regulations and yeah. sitting here with yeah. our masks on. We've come together as a faith community to join and call on our good God who has a good plan and who wants to hear and help us. We're going to pray today. And our prayer requests come in all week through this number, through Facebook, through Instagram, through email. And we for had requests anything. this week. There was a lot for jobs. Right. In this season, economically. The culture. People that, some are getting out of school, they need a job. Tough season to find a job, but our yeah. God is able. Yes, he People is. People that have transitioned and they've been laid off, they need a better job. Our God is able. Yeah. We've also had a lot of messages about stress and anxiety. And we believe that we have a God that provides, and he also provides peace. Amen. Yes. Come on, can we pray together as a Let's church? Let's pray. Online, when you pray with us, in person, can we raise your voice? You're not watching two people pray. We're praying together. Let's believe God who is faithful will answer. Amen. Come on, Nancy, let's pray. God, thank you so much that you carry our cares. Yes, God, you that you are attentive to our cry mm. when we call on you. That's what your word tells us. That's what your promises tell us. You're a faithful, good God. So today, for those online, mm. 
for those here in these seats, Father, we yes, believe Lord. for prosperity and yes. provision in job yes. placements. Yes. God, not only just what we do to get monetary money, God, but what we do to be in the place that you've set us apart to be in. Father, I pray for positions for people in Jesus' name. And God, I believe over hearts that are troubled and over minds that are just distracted. God, thank you that we have natural help here on earth. But, Father, we call on your supernatural power today yes, yes, yes. of love, power, and a sound mind over those underneath this community, God, and online. Jesus, we love you. We're so thankful yes. that you're faithful. Yes, you are. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God's amen. faithful, amen. He is. Come on, can you he hug is. someone in your bubble, someone that you're sitting next to, hug them. You're my bubble. Uh, give them a high five. Welcome to the church as you grab a seat today. How many are glad to be in church today? By a round of applause. Anybody glad to be in church? Oh, we are so thankful for everybody online and in this theater. Yeah, we are. Theater. We're uh, thankful. If, if you're here today, um, we want to treat our guests really good, and we love our online guests that are here. But in person at our service here, if you're here for the first time, it's a big deal to There's come somewhere. There's a little something. It's a big deal to come somewhere for the first time yeah, there, in person. It is. It I'm, is. Like it's, it's, some people are nervous coming to church. <laughs> we get that. What do I wear? Uh, what do I do? You load up your kids. You, you get out the door. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And then am I going to say the right thing, do the right thing? We think it's awesome that you came to church today. Yeah. So because of that, we want to give you a gift. So if you're a yep. guest, just text the word guest to that number. Real Go quick, back to the virtual land. It's okay to bring your phone out in church. You all got them. We know you do. Uh, some of you have Blackberries. Are we retiring the Blackberry jokes? We're all done with the Blackberry jokes. Hey. Okay, some of you have iPhones, some of you have Androids. Just text that number, guess to that number, uh, and follow the link real quick. And on your way out, there's a big table that says welcome. Yeah. And just show that text. We want to give you an amazing gift. Grab and go. That you're going to enjoy, easy, easy. enjoy, enjoy. So if you're a guest, just take a moment. Text the word guest to that number just so we can give you this and just love on you. And we're so thankful we you are. are here. We're thankful next you steps. made it. We just had Next Steps class. You guys. So Next Steps is so fantastic. And we were running it virtually, but now we're back in person and next steps is a place for you to just come be a part and learn about our culture hear about our dna so that you too can be a part of this dream team that makes this experience two times on a sunday and online yeah. three times that we get to tell the story of jesus and our dream team we couldn't do it without yeah, everyone sure. so again it doesn't run after the second service unfortunately just trying to juggle the covid numbers but the 10 a.m service if you come and be apart then you can jump right into next steps after that service so if you want to be a part of that next week register yes. for the 10 a.m come be and a then part stay. it's only a 30 minute class yeah and we'll help you get plugged in and make this happen absolutely so good love i love you. you very much thank okay. you i want to encourage you today as we get ready to take an offering before we worship today and again we're so thankful for our online campus and in person. It's good to see your faces. And in the, in the online feed, to see your emojis and some fire emojis, some, some, some sun emojis. Some of you are already dealing with some snow emojis. But for those in person, it's so good to see your faces, or at least your eyes, at least. And we're really glad you're here. Last couple of weeks, we've been talking about uh, why me and Nancy give um, as a part of this church. And I was reading in Ephesians 5, it says this. It says, be imitators of God. I think that's fascinating in our culture of celebrities, whether it be athletes or movie stars or online influencers on Instagram or whoever that would be, we, we imitate people. I had someone on one of my team earlier say, are you trying to imitate a, a, a World War II bomber uh, pilot with that jacket? I was like, hey, it's called fashion, look it up. Uh, it was so hot, it's like a sheep being wrapped by a sheep, being hugged by a sheep all day, it's amazing. But imitators. The Bible says if you're going to imitate anybody, imitate God. The Bible says in John that God so loved the world he gave. God's a giver. We as a family and with our teenagers, we model, we want to imitate God in giving. And here's why we give as a family. We give because we want the local church to be able to do more. It's really that simple. I remember when COVID hit and we had to turn and pivot. There's a word we need to retire, right? Pivot. New normal, pivot, social distancing, talking moistly. These are all things we need to retire after this season. As we pivoted to go online, we had to navigate with gear and find gear and rent gear and buy gear. And then in the middle of that, people, some of us even here, just started navigating jobs and loss of jobs and layoffs and setbacks. And I'm so thankful for a church that we've always had more than enough to start to help our city. And we've 
spent thousands of dollars feeding our city and reaching out to our hospitals with supplies and helping people in our church, people we've never met, never will met. And as we give to the church, we make it possible to do more. Online campus, you're a part of this. We're able to do more because of the giving of our church. When you give, you say, hey, we can do more as a church. How many know that we have more to do in this city as a church? We want to reach more people with the good news. We want to reach more people dealing with hopelessness and depression. We want to reach more people that are struggling. We want to fight injustice. We want to do more. We are part of the solution in this city. When we give, we create space for God to use us to do more. When you give, it gives us the option to do more as a church. There's lots of ways you can give. You'll see it behind me. You can text to give. You can e-transfer. And if you're international on our website, you can find it right there under the giving tab. But today... Can we imitate God in our speech, in our conduct, in our forgiveness, in our grace, and our giving? Amen? Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for those right now that are giving. I thank you, God, that we are imitators of you. In a world that copies celebrities, that wants to imitate the latest trends, God, we are passionate about imitating you. God, we give today to grow this church, to grow the influence in this city, that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. Bless those that give. In Jesus' name, everybody said... Amen. Can you stand to your feet today as we get ready to worship? I want to encourage you today. I don't know about you what it's like out there, but sometimes for us, it feels like our whole life the last seven months has been the word restrictions. Have you felt like that? Have you, anybody gone down the wrong way down a Sobeys or Superstore food aisle yet? Panic hits my heart. Oh, I forgot about the arrows. How many times have you gone to go in for gas and you forgot your mask and you're going to run back to the car and everything is a restriction? In this person online and in person, sometimes it can feel like we're restricted. Can't sing, can't enjoy. Can I encourage you, keep your mask on. Sing loud. We waited seven months to be in person. You got up today and turned on your screen to be here. Let's be here today. Let's enjoy this moment. God is speaking to us. God is encouraging us. And God is here. Amen. Come on, let's worship together.
So that's more than a song. So I don't know, it's been seven months. When we come back, sometimes I think we forget why we came back. You ever miss something, but you don't know why you missed it? It's like, oh, I know we missed it. Healed and forgiven. But look where my chains are now. Death has no hold on me. See, some of you are too quiet. I think you've forgotten why we're here, why we've gathered. See, I love that song. It says, I always picture my chains that once held me, now at my feet. See, I know who some of you are. I know your Facebook. I know your story. I know where you've been. I remember when you walked in here three years ago, two years ago, when God got a hold of your life 20 years ago, there were chains of addictions and abuse and depression and suicide and hopelessness and lust and pride that held you down. But now because of the goodness and grace of God, healed and forgiven, those chains that once carried you, that bound you, now they're at your feet. We have much to celebrate in this place. See, why do we come to church? because we can't stand watching on our coats. That's one reason. Because our kids were driving us crazy. That's another reason. Listen, there's only two reasons to come to church today. We need to help somebody in this place. One, church is a hospital for the hurting. Don't get mistaken by the nice lights and the bomber jackets and the, and, and, and the atmosphere and the smiling faces and, and all the signage. This is a hospital. People walk in here bleeding emotionally, spiritually, broken, at the edge of despair. This is a place for the hurting. If you're bleeding today, if you're hurting today, if you feel like there's no way out, that you're surrounded by darkness, you feel like you're broken, you feel like you're not going to make it, you are in the right place. Some people go, I got to get cleaned up before I come to church. I, I'm a mess. I can't. This is the place you're supposed to come. The church is a hospital. It is an infirmity for the hurting. That's why we're here. If you're here today and you're hurting, you're in the right spot today. Jesus wants to help you and heal you and forgive you and lift you up. Second reason why we come to church is because once we were broken and beaten and bondaged and addicted and under pain, and then God got a hold of us and healed us and helped us, and now church is a place we party. It's either a hospital or a party. It's got to be one of those for you today. If you're hurting, you're in the right place. You can't stop crying, you're in the right place. But if God has done something for you in this place, if God got a hold of your life, if he took the chains off of you, if he forgave you and raised you up, if he blessed you, if his grace is good, we should be the loudest, the biggest party in town. Why? Because God is good. And what used to bind me is now at my feet because God is bigger than my chains. Can someone say? That's why we're here today. That's the only two reasons why we're here today. So listen, I know you got your masks on. But it's okay to celebrate. It's okay to smile. It's okay to sing. It's okay to cheer. Listen, if you're hurting today, it's okay to bleed. It's okay to be broken. Because God's going to meet you right where you are. Can somebody say amen? Look at your neighbor and say, welcome to church. As you grab a seat today, welcome to church. Welcome to the party and the hospital that is church. We're so glad you're here. Thank you, worship team. We're going to come back with that song in a minute. We're so glad you're here. How many are glad to be in person in church? All right, three people. People online, you excited to be online today? We're glad. We have people all over our city joining us. We got people, uh, part of our church now. I see you, Meek, as in the Philippines, have joined our church since COVID started. People all over the country. Uh, we're so glad you've joined us, and we're so glad you joined us in person today. We do two in-person uh, experiences every Sunday. We're so selling out both of them. People are excited to be back in church, and we're so glad to see your smiling eyes in this place. And uh, you are worth the wait. We're so glad you're here. If you have your Bible, get your into Mark chapter 4 today. Mark chapter 4, we're in a series right now called Code Red. And uh, we're going through the red words of Jesus in the New Testament. And we are unpacking them and, and, and taking encouragement and instruction for those for our lives. And uh, we're going to continue that today. I do need to say again, we're so excited. If you're a guest, would you please just text that word guest to that number and, and just stop by that table. We just want to bless you. And for those online, thank you. Whatever time zone you're in, if you're watching this later on, if you're watching this live, we're so glad that you've tuned in today. And it's not a mistake that someone shared this on their Facebook, someone shared this uh, YouTube link, and we're glad that you've joined us. And we're believing in person and online that when we leave here, we're more like Jesus than we came in. 
How many would like your spouse to be more like Jesus when they leave here? Can someone say, don't, don't say amen to that. Get you in trouble today. And, uh, but we're really, really glad you're here. Mark chapter, Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. I'm going to read a few passages here and going to encourage us this morning. Starting in verse 26, Jesus also said, The kingdom of God, like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First the blade, leaf blade pushes through, uh, and the head of the wheat is formed, and finally the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvest it with a sickle, for harvest, harvest time has come. Then he goes on in verse 30. This is our key verse today. How can I describe the kingdom of God? It's a good question. How can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It's like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds but it becomes the largest of all the garden plants. So it grows long branches, and birds can make nests in its shade. For the next few minutes, I want to talk on this topic, this title. If you're writing it down online, you'll see this topic, Unstoppable. Unstop- I was going to call it Cut the Mustard. Thank you for the three people that enjoyed that. Um, I was going to call it Colonel Mustard. I was going to call it Mustard Gas, because it's going to be just amazing. I went with unstoppable, unstoppable. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. God, thank you for your presence. Thank you that you're through every screen. You're in person. God, our goal today is very clear. We didn't come just to be religious. We didn't come just to attend a building. We didn't just turn on the, can- turn on the phone, turn on the iPad, just to do our duty. We want to be more like you. We want to be more passionate about you and more invested in your plan for our lives. God, would you help us? Would you help us today? Would you help us understand that, God, you are the God that frees us of our chains. You are the God that loves us and saves us and helps us. Father, thank you for your plan for our lives. We thank you for this church. And everybody said? Everybody said? What is the greatest threat to our faith? It's an important question to ask. People go, threat, man, it's awful early. Listen, you're the 1130 crowd. You should be wide awake. You're, come on, you're the party people. But it's a question to ask on a Sunday morning. What is the greatest threat to our faith? Something like threat. What do you mean a threat? Listen, the Bible calls this fight of faith, this faith, it calls it a fight of faith. Not a spa of faith. Not a vacation of faith. Not a, not a not recess of faith. Not a day off of faith. It calls it a fight of faith. Because there is a battle between heaven and hell for the very souls of our kids, our teens, our marriages, our singleness, our lives, our cities. We are in a fight. And there is an opponent. There is opposition. So I ask you again today, what is the greatest threat to our Christian faith? I want to let you know today that the greatest threat is not communism. It's not socialism. It's not the Republicans or the Democrats or the New Democratic. It's not the Liberal Party or the Tories. It's not the, uh, the, any political party or person. It's not. It's not Islam or Hinduism or atheism. It's not a form of beliefs. It's not addictions. It's not lack of finances or COVID or restrictions. It's not about not gathering and masked and two meters apart and speaking moistly and all these things. That's not the greatest opposition to our faith. The greatest opposition and threat to following Jesus is religion. Now, you need to understand this today because we're going somewhere. We're unpacking the words of Jesus in this code red. Jesus is talking to us. He's convicting us. He's inspiring us. He's leading us. And Jesus took time to talk about the kingdom of God. And I want to let you know today the greatest threat that we have to an authentic, inspiring, real faith in Jesus Christ is Christian religion. It really is. Of all my issues and uh, my addiction, the addiction I have uh, wasn't drugs, it wasn't cocaine, it wasn't alcohol. The addiction I had is religion. I'm thankful for my background. I'm thankful for my upbringing in church. and uh, um, It's been wonderful, but if I'm not careful, I can focus in on religion more than my faith. What's the difference between faith and religion? 
See, it's amazing, Jesus, in, in this scripture in the New Testament, he was always hard on religious people, and he showed compassion on sinners. We do the opposite. We treat people that go to church, and religious people, we treat, to treat them better, and we're, we're always stepped to the other side of the road. We, we judge, we cast fingers and, and, and judgment on people that are struggling. Jesus didn't act that way. Jesus gave his most compassion and most grace and most time with those that were struggling. And the only people he ever convicted and judged and rebuked were the religious people. What's the difference between religion and faith? Well, religion makes a big deal of the how. Faith is obsessed with the who. And that's the difference. Religion is focused on the how. Sometimes we point fingers at maybe other denominations and go, man, I'm so thankful I'm not a part of that kind of church. they got to wear robes and collars. I am thankful I don't need to wear a collar today. Instead, I'm being smothered by a sheep. I mean, you know, I've traded robes for, to be hugged by a sheep, and I know what you're thinking. I'm pulling the wool over your eyes. I'm sorry. That was a bad joke. I'll just... If you're online, you can tune onto another church. I'm sure there's lots of... You guys are stuck with me in person, but... We look at other denominations, we're like, man, I'm so thankful that we don't have to be as quiet as they are. I'm so thankful we don't have to go in and have so much ceremony and structure and that we can be free. I'm so thankful, but how many know that we have our own religious things we deal with? Man, people are just like, man, it's not, it's not real church if it's not in person. Other people are like, well, uh, man, it's, it, it, I can't go back. It's not safe to go back. I'm going to watch online. And we get obsessed with, you got to raise your hands or not raise your hands. If you, what kind of clothes you wear or don't wear. If it can be dark or light. Is it cool or not cool? Well, I like Hillsong. I like Bethel. I like Jesus culture. I like uh, Mercy Me. Mercy Me. Someone likes Mercy Me. But we, we all have music tastes. And we get obsessed with the how of church when faith is, is, is passionate about the who. I even saw this in the States, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but I can't stop myself. There's this whole movement right now of protests, Christians saying, you know, let us worship. You're stopping us from worship by restricting our buildings and having meetings. And they have these, these placards, and they're going from city to city and breaking rules and spreading disease, and they're having their moments, and some of them are even my friends. Now, listen, some of you are passionate about these people. Well, some of you need to hear what I'm saying right now. They're saying, let us worship, and they're, they're protesting. I'm like, let us worship. My Bible says Paul and Silas in a cell with chains around their feet and their arms in a dark cell that the guards and the chains and the cell couldn't stop them from worshiping. Who is stopping you from worshiping? Don't mistake the how of religion with the who of faith. No one can stop you. My Bible says he's as close as the mention of his name. That when two or three are gathered, listen, I, I'm in, my, in my darkest place, in my most restricted place, you cannot stop me from connecting with God Almighty. If we're not careful, we'll focus so much on the how, we'll miss the who. Religion is our greatest threat. We can be so religious sometimes. Today I want to talk about the kingdom of God. Jesus talks about this faith. In this passage, he calls it the kingdom of God. Unstoppable. What happens when you become obsessed with Jesus and the kingdom of God? We're Jesus people. If you're a guest here, we're so glad you're here. If you're watching online, you just tuned in. We are obsessed with Jesus. We believe that he, he has a plan for our lives. He found us at our worst. He's raising us to our best. That it's not, this life is not easy, but it is worth it. God has a plan for us. He's forgiven us. He's using us. We're not perfect people. We're not a perfect church, but we serve a perfect God, and we are seeing perfect moments when God is doing something miraculous in our lives, in our families, in our cities. Jesus here talks about the kingdom of God. And he likens it unto a mustard seed. I think that's fascinating. Now, the kingdom of God here doesn't mean the end times or the afterlife, though it includes those places. It means any place or situation or moment where the sovereignty or the power of God is evident. That's the kingdom of God. Romans 14, 17 says the kingdom of God is righteousness, right living, peace, and joy. Wherever you have those things, God's kingdom is there. Listen, that's going to free somebody if you understand that. I'm thankful for this theater. I'm thankful for this building. I'm thankful for churches in this area. But it's not, Jesus is not confined. His kingdom is not confined to a building or a room or a camera. That wherever you have the attributes and the power of God, his kingdom is there. 
That means the kingdom of God could be in your school, in your home, in your business, in every street corner, every back room, boardroom, and bedroom of our city. The kingdom of God is wherever his power and sovereignty is. That's the kingdom of God. We are passionate about the kingdom of God. And Jesus likens it to a mustard seed. Let me unpack this today. A few things I learned about a mustard seed as I studied this and read this for today. Because we are passionate about the kingdom of God. Can someone say amen? We're obsessed with Jesus. What does it look like when you're obsessed with Jesus? Number one, a mustard seed, I learned this, is it won't stay in one place. From very small seedlings, this plant grows rapidly once it appears, and it takes over the field it's planted in. It takes over. During COVID, I decided I'm going to have the best lawn in the neighborhood. Now, girls might think this way. I can't speak for girls, but I can speak for guys. Every guy needs to know, you know this, right? It's always a competition who has the best lawn on your street. We don't say it publicly. We don't even admit it, but it's on. And some of us gave in going, I do not have the best lawn, but we know who does. And this year I said, I will be that guy. I will have the best lawn. I got time. I got, I got, I got, I got no reason why I can't have the best lawn on the neighborhood. And to this day, as of right now, I have the best lawn on my street. I do. I drive by, I get my kids, and look at their lawn. Look how horrible that is. I take my kids around the neighborhood so they appreciate what they have. I'm like, look at that. I, I'm not joking. Josh, look at that lawn. He goes, look at the weeds. I know. Maddie, look at that one. She goes, what's that? That's called cinch bug, Maddie. They didn't even care. And then, we, and then I pull them into our lawn, and it's perfect, and it's golden. It's, the, the light's golden on it, the green everywhere. I got different shades. Here's what I've learned about my lawn is that weeds grow where you don't want them to grow. I've never planted a weed, but they grow. Weeds will grow where you don't want them to grow. Weeds go everywhere. We put this new crushed stone down, and we put down probably a foot of crushed stone. Within two weeks, weeds were coming through that crushed stone. I was looking at my gutter the other day, and my gutter's up two stories, and I can't reach it, and there are weeds coming out of my gutter. How did they get there? Weeds just grow. You know what doesn't grow? Grass. <laughs> it's so hard to get your grass to grow. I got fertilizer, I'm irrigating it, I'm looking out for cinch bug, and I'm looking out for crows, and I got things moving so the crows stay away, and I'm fighting to keep my grass from growing, but the weeds I give no attention to, they take over my driveway, take over my gutters, take over my lawn, take over my property. It's amazing here that Jesus likens the kingdom of God to something that grows rapidly, and it won't stay in one place. The kingdom of God is wild. Religion is controlled. So many times we want to control people. You can't say that. You got to wear that. You got to give that much money. You got to go here and do that. And we want to control people. The kingdom of God, Jesus says, is more like a mustard seed. You can't control it. Once it's planted, you can't stop it. It doesn't stay in your compartments. Religion says Sunday morning you give an hour to God, and that's the compartment that God lives in. The kingdom of God says, no, no, it won't stay in that hour. It's going to flow into your marriage, into your purity, into your singleness, into your finances, into your job, into your school. The kingdom of God does not stay where you plant it. It happens to take over and goes everywhere. That's the kingdom of God. We're a church that we refuse to play nice and just stay in our little hour service in a building on a Sunday morning. We believe God's called us as the kingdom of God to go everywhere all the time. Can't stop us, won't stop us. We're called to bring hope and life and peace and joy and forgiveness and goodness. When we're in our city, there should be less racism. There should be less poverty. There should be less injustice. There should be more joy and peace and love. Why? Because the kingdom of God refuses to stay where it's put. Like a mustard seed grows quickly and takes over. That's the kingdom of God. Here's the other thing I learned about a mustard seed is it flourishes on many different types of soil. Oh, this is good. Different types of soil. Dry ground, hard ground, swampy ground. Mustard seeds will still grow. People say this all the time. They say, well, my city is hard to the gospel. People say, my school is hard to the gospel. My, my family is hard to the gospel. You know what I realize is, as I travel and pre-COVID fly a lot, I'd fly into one part of the country to go, man, Toronto, pff, it's hard to the gospel, man. People, man, they're so busy. They got to drive two hours to work and two hours home, and there's so much crime, and there's so much busyness, and there's so much pressure. That it doesn't work here. And then I, I fly to Winnipeg, and people say, man, there's so much addictions here, and so much abuse here, and so much depression here. It doesn't work here. And then I fly to Saskatchewan, and people go, there's no people that live here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Love you, Saskatchewan. And, Go to the West Coast, like, man, it's so expensive to live here. And, man, people are into nature, but they're into spirituality, but not God. And every place has a reason. You know what they told me? They told me Halifax was hard to the gospel. 
man, it's so traditional but so liberal at the same time. They're, they're rooted in their foundation, and, and the buildings are old, and the beliefs are old, but it's also liberal because the universities, the gospel doesn't work in Halifax. My friends, after three years, I have to tell you, the gospel works in Halifax. It works in Toronto. It works in Winnipeg. It works wherever. Why? Because the kingdom of God grows on any soil. You are proof today. Churches all over this city packed Online, people watching. Why? Because the good news does not stay in one place and it grows on any ground. People say, my school's too hard. My life has too much baggage. Yeah, it might work for them. They're a good person. I got too much baggage. If you knew where I was last night, if you knew what I did last week, if you knew my past, you knew about that marriage and that problem and that business, it's fine for them. Look at them. They're nice people, but it's too much. I'm too much. Or we say, that person, man, they don't stand a chance. Like, I'm not even going to invite them. I'm not even going to share this link with them because I, th- th- they are too far gone. They have too many issues for Jesus. The gospel works on all grounds. I know your stories, and I know your faces, and the backgrounds in this room. It's proof that the kingdom of God grows on all grounds. Some of you weren't looking for Jesus, but he found you. Some of you weren't looking for a live stream, but it found you. And hope is flooding into our hearts. The kingdom of God grows on all grounds. It says this, that mustard seed was used as medicine by ancient physicians. Used as medicine. You know, it's amazing. The kingdom of God heals where it grows. I believe our city is healthier today than it was three years ago when we planted. It's the truth. There's other churches planting in our city and churches that have been around for years and our, our city is better because of those churches. Wherever the kingdom of God goes, it heals. There's this saying I heard my whole life that time heals all wounds. Have you heard that? It's not true. How do I know that? I've met people in their 60s and 70s that are bitter, that are heavy with the weight of disappointment. Why? Because of a marriage that went wrong in their 30s, a business that failed in their 20s, a relationship that broke broken down in their 40s, and time only makes it worse. The poison goes to more parts of their body. Time does not heal all wounds. Jesus heals all wounds. If time healed all wounds, there'd be no need for Jesus. The kingdom of God, like a mustard seed, heals where it goes. I believe where the church is, it heals racial tensions. And racial tensions is more than an American problem. It's our problem. But the kingdom of God heals where it goes. Injustice, poverty, I believe healing comes where the kingdom of God flourishes. I believe our city is better. See, some of you need to understand this. Your job is better because you work there. Your school is better because you walk those halls. Healing comes when we go where the kingdom of God. It says that it's mustard seed is useful for flavoring. Oh, I like this. I like some flavor. I like some flavor in my life. It adds flavor to everything. It's not boring. I got news for you. Church isn't boring. Kingdom of God is not boring. You might be boring. This wool jacket would say otherwise. I'm not boring. I'm hot. I'm sweating, but I'm not boring. You know what I believe? I believe that the kingdom of God, sometimes people think, oh, church is boring. Church is boring. Kingdom of God isn't. Religion is boring. It tells you what you can't do. Kingdom of God tells you what you should do. Kingdom of God tells you what you can be. It tells you what God's called for your life. I believe we're called to add flavor to our city. We should have the best music. We should be involved in the arts. We should add flavor to every classroom, every boardroom, every back room. We should bring, when we walk in, hope should walk in. You know what brings flavor? Hope. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Peace. People are dying for peace. And we walk in, man, what's that flavor? Can you you taste that? Feels like a second chance to me. I hadn't tasted that for a long time. Can you, can you smell that? What does that smell like? That smells like joy, man. I don't remember the last time I was happy. I believe we change every room we walk into. Why? Because we add some flavor to the room. Add some flavor. Kingdom of God. Religion stifles and kills. Kingdom of God adds flavor. Last thing is it says is that the kingdom of God was a, that this mustard was a small seed. I think it's interesting it's a small seed. See, we expect, I would expect Jesus to compare the kingdom of God to something like an oak tree or a redwood. At least a palm tree. But a mustard seed. See, because he wanted to let us know something that 
So often the gospel begins differently than we would expect. See, I would have had Jesus coming as a mighty warrior and champion and king, but he came as a baby. I would have picked, if I was Jesus, the mightiest, the smartest, the, the greatest thinkers and influencers of my day, but he picked simple, normal disciples. The kingdom of God always starts small, but it refuses to stay small. Today you need to know, even in this service, online and in person, there's moments where the kingdom of God is dropping seeds into your heart. During one of these songs, you walked in here thinking it was going to be another Sunday, another live stream, and all of a sudden that one word from that one song put a seed right in your heart, kingdom of God. You're like, well, what is that? And the hope that was birthed small is starting to grow, even right now, into your marriage, going, maybe my marriage isn't done. Maybe my kids aren't too far gone. Maybe I, I don't need to give in to these thoughts that I'm having. And hope starts to grow in your life. Joy, peace, generosity, grace. Small beginnings lead to big changes. Big changes. Last thing I love is in verse 33, Jesus said, I speak in parables for the crowds, but I teach privately to my disciples. He talked in stories and drew their curiosity. He talked about fishing and he talked about lost coins and lost kids and, and, and lost riches. He talked about farming and sowing and reaping and he talked about mustard seeds. He told stories. We're fascinated with stories, aren't we? That's why we watch movies and we all have Disney Plus and Netflix and Amazon Prime and Apple TV and everything else we have. Why? Because we just want a good story. Jesus would tell stories to draw their curiosity and when they came closer, then he would unpack the truth. The church of Jesus Christ's kingdom is like a mustard seed. And you're a story. See, Jesus is still using parables today. You're a parable. Your life is an illustration. Do you know that people are fascinated with your life? It draws curiosity going, I know what they were like, but something's happened. I'm, I'm fascinated what happened there. What, what happened to him? I love this, and I can tell you names and tell you stories, but there are people a part of this church and watching online. The reason why they're a part of this church is because they saw a sweater with our logo on it, and all these kids at this one school in our city used to wear these sweaters and hats. And this one teacher told me, he's like, I remember thinking, what's, what's, this, what's that logo? Is that a sports team? What is that? What kind of fashion are these kids wearing? He said, but I noticed that whoever had that sweater on, these kids weren't perfect, but they were remarkable kids. They were like the best of the best, great attitudes, loving kids, forgiving, like just amazing. They added flavor to our school. He said, I had to find out where these kids were coming from. Walked in our church on a Sunday because he had to find out where these kids got this from. And now they're a part of our church, amazing, a part of our, our, our family here. Why? Because your life is a testimony. Your life is a parable. Your life is a story that causes people to be curious. Did you know that? When you walk into your school, into your job, people are going, something about them. And then when God draws them closer in moments like this, on streams like this, they start to unpack and hear about the truth and the goodness of God. Today, I want to remind you we're part of something bigger than a who, bigger than a what or a how. We are obsessed with the who. Whether we meet online or in person, whether we have two services or five services, whether the balcony is open or closed, whether we meet on Sundays or Saturday nights, it doesn't so much matter about the how or the when, but we are obsessed with a person. A person that found us and saved us and leads us and loves us and helps us, the person of Jesus Christ. And this kingdom cannot be stopped. It is unstoppable. You can't silence it. You can't ignore it. It will take over and bring life and hope. And where it goes, it brings life and life abundantly. That's the kingdom of God. And that's what we're a part of. All over this place as we get ready to close, can we all stand to our feet today? I want to pray for two groups of people. First one is, you know Jesus, you love Jesus. Somewhere there's a battle going on inside of you where you need some fresh seed of the kingdom in your life. I want to pray that a seed right now of faith would drop into your life. A seed of conviction, a seed of revelation, small seed. You might think, man, it's just a prayer. I know. But here's what I've learned about seeds. They don't stay where you put them. We underestimate them. That seed will grow and bring flavor and huge change. In a moment, we're going to sing this song about these chains being gone. 
I believe a seed's gonna start growing in your life as we walk out these doors. You're gonna be a testimony. You're gonna bring flavor to your school, to your job, to your home. Heavenly Father, right now I pray for our church. I pray for those right now that feel like there's more hopelessness than hope. There's more religion than faith. There's more rules than there is wildness. There's more death than life. I speak life right now to your church. We become obsessed with you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, would you become big in our lives? I pray this seed right now of faith would fall into every life. We would resist religion, resist the, the what's and the how's, and would we be obsessed with you, Lord Jesus? Would you make yourself real, even right now in this prayer, right now, would your life, right now, would your word, would your spirit fill us right now? I speak life over you, sir. I speak life over you, ma'am. I speak over your marriages. I speak over your purity and your singleness. I speak over your finances and your kids. I speak over your atmosphere and your influence. I speak the kingdom of God, full of strength, growth, flavor, and life. Second group I want to pray for today is like, you know, Mike, I don't know Jesus, man. Someone invited me. I'm watching online. I came in person. I don't know Jesus. But I want that. I want something that brings life and hope. I want to know there's God that loves me, that can rescue me and heal me. I want that Jesus. With every head bowed, and every eye closed for a moment, if you're in person, you say, Mike, I want you to pray for me today. I'm not going to ask you to join a church. It's not about anything like that. It's just a matter of saying, I'm a candidate for God to do a miracle in my life. I want to follow Jesus. With every head bowed on the count of three, if that's you, I want to get you to raise your hand and put it right back down. One. Two. It's not everybody, but it's somebody today. Three, if that's you, put your hand right back, right up. Put it right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Put your hand right back down. Can we pray online, in person? Can we pray today? I believe a miracle is going to happen. Just a service on a Sunday morning in October. Just a small seed. But you are surrounded by people that that seed took root and the kingdom of God advances. Let's pray. God, I thank you for those right now that are making a decision to say, I want to follow you, Lord Jesus. God, would you forgive us for our sin where we've wandered? Would you come in and forgive our past, make sense of our present, and we give you our future? Would you lead us? Would you guide us? Would this faith, would this relationship grow and overtake every compartment of our life, overtake every part of our soul? Jesus, make yourself real. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, listen, if you prayed that prayer online or in person, will you text this word, faith, to that word? Just as we sing this song, we're going to keep that up for a minute, Jeremy. If you just text that word, faith, to that number so we can celebrate with you. Today, I believe that a seed was sown and a tree is about to grow, a tree of life, a tree of hope, a tree of joy, amen? Come on, let's sing this together as we close today about the goodness and faithfulness of God.
today. I really believe that it will bless your heart. If I can leave you with one thing, just one thing uh, to take away this week, it would be what Pastor Mike said, religion is obsessed with the what, the kingdom of God is obsessed with the who. Can I encourage you today to lean into the kingdom of God? When, when we're tempted to lean into religion and focus on the what, let's lean into the kingdom of God that, that leans into the who. Reach out to someone this week. If this message blessed your heart, share it. Send it to somebody. I believe God wants to use his word to encourage his people. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you back here next week.